Hey guys, it's Aaron. Uh, I was playing around with SketchUp and Layout, as people do, and I kind of came up with this, this fun way to use the different ways of showing a SketchUp model in Layout along with some functions of styles to create a unique composite image inside of layout with no no photoshopping or anything like that something where people would a lot of times use photoshop to create different layers and composite them together you can do it all in layout so um, if you've clicked on the thumbnail you already know what this is going to end up looking like but uh, here as i'm recording it i haven't done it yet so let's take this car right here and uh, make a new unique image using just sketchup and layout all right so this is a car I just pulled this down from 3D Warehouse. It's I liked it because it had these nice lines and uh, bright color, that kind of thing. So what I want to do is I want to get like one of those composite images you see, uh, where the color fades out into like absolute white, see-through at the back, but the lines stay over top of it. So I want to create a composite look like that, but I want to do it just with SketchUp and Layout. And I want to do it with as, as few steps or, or, or pieces as possible, too. So I'm going to do a little bit of prep here in SketchUp. I like this view. I like this view that I'm looking at it from. Um, I'm going to come over into Styles, though. I'm going to turn the sky off. And I'm going to change my background color to just straight up white. Like that. Okay, that is what I want to see. That's perfect so far. The other thing I want to do is I want to get that fade in here. So I'm going to use Fog to do this. Now, Fog is limited compared to, say, a... A gradient fade that I could put on or gradient mask I could put on in uh, something like Photoshop because it it's a linear fade it's a 3d linear fade that is straight away from the camera so uh, it, I don't have the ability to say bring the fade across this way it's always depending on where the camera's at but with this kind of three-quarter view I think I can do a pretty good job with the dials here of saying you know bring it up so it fades all the way out and back but keep the front fade back far enough so I have nice clear colors and crisp lines on the closest corner. So I'm gonna get just, yeah, just kind of like that. So I'm gonna lose that back tire and back end, but I want to keep clear, crystal clear colors right up here in the front. So do something like, like that. There we go. All right, that's the look I want. Now just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to add a scene, and I'll just leave it called scene one. I just want to make sure that if I do come in and play with this at all, I can always revert back here. So my scene, as it is saved right now, saves a lot of stuff that I just set up. So it saves the, saves the style. So it has that background of white. It saves the fog setup that I have here. It saves the camera location. So even if when I hop into layout, I just use the current view, that's fine. But knowing that I have a scene to jump back to if I need to is good. So I use scenes a lot where I don't actually necessarily intend to use them for final output in any way. But by having it as a scene, it's kind of just peace of mind knowing that I could jump back to this view if I had to. Plus, unless I'm looking at like hundreds of scenes, adding a scene doesn't cost me anything in, as far as the model goes. So I'm going to go ahead and save this model. And I'm going to take it right into layout. So I'm going to hit send layout. Layout's going to pop up. Let's use just a landscape drawing. That's fine. All right, there we go. There's our model. Uh, it looks good. So we've done a couple of videos, especially recently, talking about stacking viewports, that kind of thing. Stacking viewports is awesome uh, because it does give you your line work separate from your fill behind, and you have a little more flexibility. I want to do as much as I can with just this single viewport. So I'm just going to keep this one. I want to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to really use this page. I have a lot of white around the drawing right now, but that's good. That fills up the page pretty well. All right, so I'm going to do a couple of steps here is all. Um, one is I'm going to come over here and change my rendering style. So right now it's set to raster, which is my default in layout. Raster, of course, is like basically a bitmap drawing. So it's drawing all these colors. Um, that's perfect. If I was to switch it to vector, look what would happen here. So vector, of course, is just going to be lines and surfaces, basically a flat render of the entire model. So all of my pieces show up. Something I lose in raster, or I'm sorry, something I lose in vector is fog. So it, vector drawing does not include 
something like fog. So that's not going to work either. If I flip over to hybrid though, this is pretty cool because what hybrid does is it takes the imagery, the colors from the raster image and lays them underneath the lines from the vector. So this is getting closer to what I want to see. Remember I was talking about that fade from my full color out to white, but keeping those outlines. Um, I like this. It looks okay, uh, but I might want to go a little bit further. There's two things I want to add. One is I do want to include my shadow. So if I turn on shadows right now, this is nice because shadows will actually come on as a part of hybrid. So vector, they won't show up, but in hybrid, this actually shows up and Look at this, my shadow disappears into the fog as well. That's pretty cool. That's, that's exactly what I had envisioned in my mind was that that would trail off like that. If I had that hard shadow all the way around, it would ruin the effect of this disappearing. And that looks pretty good. Um, but one more thing I want to add here. I don't dislike this. I think it looks okay. But when I get back here, that black line is a little bit too harsh. So I could play with line weights if I wanted to. Um, I could select it and I could change my line weights here to a lighter or heavier pen and that would give me more or less dark lines back here. But obviously uh, I, I don't like, I like the way it looks up here. I like these lines on top, these nice hard lines. So what I'm going to do to get it to kind of look like it fades off, I can't put uh, a fade onto line work, not in vector. We just discovered that or we, we saw that but what I can do is I can take these lines and have them not be so hard black so I can do that using tags so if I come over here everything is on the same layer it's this is one I have one group that this is this car it is on the untagged layer I didn't put it into a named tag so if I click on default for dashes it's going to come up and say it's just using the default line type which is a solid black type what I want to do is I'm going to tell it well I'm going to switch from default to a solid line and I'm going to change the color to, let's say, steel. And then I'm going to click OK. That is what I'm looking for. See how that kind of fades out? It's, it's lighter now. It's not quite so heavy back here. And here I have actually kind of a cool, uh, I don't know if this is a trick of, of the eye, but when you have this color on darker colors like this, it actually kind of glows a little bit, whereas it seems a little more heavy and solid on the solid white. So just kind of a cool look that I can get just by setting a couple things. I could say this is a template right now for that matter, and would flip these things on when I bring in a new model. But there we go. That was exactly what I was looking for. So I was hoping for, we got that nice uh, composite fade. We have a nice shadow underneath. And I have some custom line work that's not too heavy in the back, uh, but still remains its crispness up front. So that was kind of a fun one. I, I was honestly, I was just kind of playing around SketchUp, kind of doing one of those. I wonder if I could kind of things going on inside layout. And I could because I made this. So hopefully you like that. If so, go ahead and click like down below. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here. And you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly, though, please leave us comments down below. Most, if not all, of our content is created from comments and requests from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.